<laughs> What's up YouTube, NCG here, bring you one of my most favourite decks, a very very fun deck and I love playing this deck, and that is Despots. Absolutely love these little buggers, like they're so good. So for those of you who don't know what Despots are, you need to check these guys out, they're basically like, um, as it says, desktop um, stationary. So you see like you've got pens, staplers, just all these little bits in it, just imagine like sitting at work one day and just imagine your, your you know, stationary turn into Transformers basically. These are all really, really cool cards. Uh, they're all Despots number 001 to 009. Uh, really, really cool kind of art type. Fun to play as well. Uh, and they can cause some quite a lot of problems in this meta because not many people, A, expect Despots, uh, and B, they're just incredibly fun uh, and can be very, very powerful for little, like, 500 beta critters. They can just turn into, like, crazy amounts, especially with Despot 3. So, I'm going to take you through this deck profile, show you what we've got, and explain why we've got what we've got. So, we play the one Despot 1. You can play some more than one if you want, but this is basically there as your one card tuner. It gains 500 attack defense for each machine type monster you control, uh, and then if two or more machine monsters are special summoned at the same time, while this card is in your graveyard, you special summon it so it can loop itself around very, very easily and nicely. Uh, Triple Despot 2, this gives all um, other machine monsters you control 500 attack, except itself uh, and defense, of course. And then if it's special summoned, you add a Despot card. So you special summon this guy off a of light. So you normally summon this, Machine Dupe, go into two more, um, search out um, Despot 3, uh, and then you kind of move the pace forward that way. Speaking of which, you play Triple Despot 3. This card is like the centerpiece of the deck because uh, when it's normal summoned, you special summon one Despot from your deck. So you normal summon this, you special summon two. Two then searches you another despot of whatever you want. You can then machine dupe um, two um, because two would give 500 to despot three, so you can't machine dupe him because um, he will now be a K. But you then machine dupe two, two goes off, and you've got more power on board. Anyway, um, so basically, once per turn during either player's turn, you entitle one despot monster you control against 500 attack and defense for each despot card you currently control until the end of the turn. So just on this combo here of um, normal in three, special in two. Uh, and then machine dupe into you have four machine monsters on board or four despot cards on board um, so straight away despot 3 can give 2k to any card and then it's gaining 15 already so it's already up to a 2k beta and it can turn itself into a 4k beta um, as easy as that we then play triple despot 4 the best thing about 4 is it can't be ashed because it activates in the damage step and ash can't activate in the damage step so <clears throat> if this battles an opponent's monster during damage calculation in either player's turn you can activate its effect once per battle, your opponent takes no battle damage for the rest of this turn. Also, you send one Despot monster from your deck to the graveyard except itself. Uh, and if you do, this card gains attack and defense equal to that monster's level times 500. So if you send uh, Despot 9, it's going up by 4,500. So it goes up to a 5k beer, which can pretty much get over anything. Uh, and if you do, this card gains attack. Uh, da -da -da -da. Then, if this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, you special summon two Despot monsters from your deck uh, with different levels from your hand and or graveyard in defense position. So he gets you recycle. Uh, so the idea is you go this in your turn, you get over any your opponent's beaters, uh, and then you can start sending your place forward uh, and go into like Nat Beast or anything like that to slow your opponent down. Triple Despot 5, now this is your card you can use to get into Cyber Dragon Infinity and Nova. I don't play that in this version, but you can do, because the extra deck is so free for you to play with. I've gone for more of a Synchro based version, but you can go more XYZ. Uh, it's Pendulum Effect, it's just you can't Pendulum Summon except Despot Monsters. But it's actual main Monster Effect is, if it's normal Special Summon, you target one spell track on the field, destroy it. Uh, it, this card gains 500 attack and defense for each face up despot monster in your extra deck. If this card is in the pendulum zone, is destroyed, you can target one despot monster in your graveyard and special summon it. Uh, you can only use uh, each effect once per turn. We then play double six. Um, again, cannot pendulum summon, but basically six, five and six go together as pendulums, and so does uh, seven and eight. Six again, uh, it gains 500 attack for each face up despot monster in your extra deck. If this card is pendulum, uh, is pendulum zone is destroyed, target one despot card in your graveyard and add it to your hand. So it's a nice little recycler. Uh, seven, we play two of those. Uh, this gains 500 attack for each uh, despot card in your graveyard. Monsters your opponent control cannot target face up despot monsters for attacks except this one. If this card attacks defense position, monster inflict piercing battle damage. So imagine boosting this up with despot three with other despots on board is amazing. Uh, double despot eight. Gains 500 attack and defense for each despot card in your graveyard. Your opponent cannot target face up despot cards with card effect except this one. So if you get these two out, you've got a very, very nice lock. Uh, and then this card can make up to two attacks on monsters during each battle phase. So you boost up eight, you just go attack, attack, and then move your place forward. So that's despot eight. And then, of course, we play the one despot nine. You can play it at two if you want. This is a beast. 
Once per turn during your main phase one, you can make this card gain attack equal to the combined attack of all despot monsters you currently control, except himself. Until the end of your opponent's turn, only this card can attack for the turn this effect is activated. If this card battles your opponent, cannot activate cards or effects until the end of the damage step. If this card would be destroyed by battle or card effect, you can destroy one despot card you control instead. So, let's say you've got a full board. You've pendulum summoned out a full board, five despot monsters. This then gains attack, and it's not original attack, it's the combined attack of all despot monsters on the field. So, let's say you've got him, you've got one free, and obviously three can stack as well. So if you've got like him plus two twos and two threes, which is mental, three then boosts him up by an extra 2k, no, 5k if you don't have the field spell. Um, so 2.5k, the other three will put him up 2.5k, so he's on 5.5 already. Then if you've got two more twos, they're going to give him 500 and a 500 as well. So he's now on 6.5, if my math is right, yeah, 6.5. And then he can use his effect to gain another 15 off of each three. So he's now up to 9.5, and then a K off of each two, so he's up to 11,500, and he gets to attack. And then if you combo him off with... Um, one of the XYZs that lets you, uh, this one here, Heavy Armoured Train Iron Wolf, this can attack directly. That's game there, like insane. You don't obviously need to have that many uh, despots on board. It does certainly help though. Uh, then to help with the Synchro Engine, we play the one Gen X Alley Birdman. Uh, if this card is in your hand, you return one face up monster you control to the hand, special summon this card, but banish it when it leaves the field. Also, it gains 5 on attack um, if the return monster was a wind. Obviously, you don't need to worry about that too much. Uh, you've got your Jet Synchron to help you with your Synchro plays. If this is in the graveyard recycle, you don't have to play this. Again, another option. Glark Bolt, because it's Earth, it actually, actually um, contributes to deck quite a lot because all your despots are Earth. So it pushes you towards your Mrs. Radiant. It can also push towards your Synchro plays, especially like Nat Beast. Uh, and then I like to tech out the one Speed Roid Menko. So you can recycle this with Gen X Alley Birdman. And it's a nice little one when your opponent's like, oh, I'm going about to OTK you. You just go Menko and shift everything to defense. Um, so it's a nice little trial out to give a go. And it's only if you control uh, when they declare a direct attack. So it's a nice little protector. Don't have to play it. It just gives you an option to work around. Plus being a wind, a level 4, and a machine, it gives more usage to the deck as well. So that's it for the monsters. Now on to the spells. We're playing triple scapegoat. Now obviously scapegoat can be used to get you into your Mrs. Radiant. They're earth tokens as well, so they combo off nicely with the rest of your machine monsters should you want to push that way. Uh, and then there's ways to move into Borrowload. Um... Or, of course, like Deco Talker as well, um, and Underclock Taker, should you need to, because you can just obviously boost the tokens up into whatever you need to. So it just gives you a bit more fodder on board to move your plays forward. We then play Triple Despot Base and the one um, Terraforming. Now, obviously, you want to see Base, and Base is very, very good because all Despot monsters on the field gain 500 attack and defense. But the second this is activated, it means your machine dupes in hand are dead, or in your deck are dead. You can reveal any number of despot cards in your hand and shuffle them into the deck, then draw the same number of cards. You can banish 9 despot cards with different names from your field and or graveyard except base, shuffle all cards from your opponent's hand, field and graveyard into the deck so you get to reset your opponent which is busted as hell. Um, it's not a staple, like a core card which is why we don't play free terraforming, um, but you do want to see it because it can boost your monsters up. On the flip side of that, um, you've got your triple machine dip as well. Now, some people play two, which is absolutely fine because of despot base. Um, the idea is you want to see this and base and then be able to use your machine dupe first, then activate base. Um, but if you open up all base but none, no machine dupes, these are then dead in your um, dead in your deck, which is a bit of a shame, really. Uh, we then play the one one for one because you've got loads. We've got three level ones. You've got a glart bulb. You've got your despot one, and then you've got your um, jet synchron. Play the one level remover because <sighs> do I really need to say doubling up double, um, despot nines attack to like twenty two, twenty three thousand? <sighs> crazy. Uh, and then we've got the one reasoning because you're playing levels one to nine, so crazy not to play that. The one regeki for ball right. The one monster reborn for you know stapling every deck. And then the one solemn judgment because it is the core trap card um, in today's game. Again, you don't have to play. If you, if you want to build this deck more for going second, um, then you can take that out. But ideally, if we go first with this, you want to aim to get like a Nat Beast on board uh, along with your Solemn Judgment and you can kind of push through uh, and do game then and there. Now, next up, we'll go into the Extra Deck. Now, the Extra Deck is very, very open to you. So these are 15 cards I've chosen, but they all have their alternatives. You can change these out for whatever you want. So these are just options for you to kind of get a idea of what the deck should look like. So we play the one Baguska. 
the one Tornado Dragon, and the one Heavy Armored Train Iron Wolf. Now, you're only ever going to make like one, maybe two of these a game if you absolutely have to. Um, you don't have to play this. This can be Gen X. Um, guys, sorry, not Gen X. Uh, Giga Brilliant. Not Giga Brilliant. Oh, I know which one I mean. The rank four machine that searches. Giga X. There we go. Oh, get there eventually. But Goose Goose is just an incredibly nice stall card, and Tornado Dragon deals with any dangerous back row. Now, you can take these out if you want to focus more onto a synchro build or more link builds. You can put in like a Link Spider, Proxy Dragon, and another Mrs. Radiant to help make your um, goats a bit more consistent. So these are just options for you to play around with. For the synchros, definitely have to play the one Despot Jet. Um, because it, it adds extra in the graveyard for your despot base effect. Plus, it gives all despot monsters on the field 500 attack. Uh, and then you get to target a despot card you control, destroy it. And if you do, special summon one despot monster from your deck. And then you can target one despot card you control and one face up card on the field and destroy it. Um, so, they're very, very nice kind of card that lets you loop around a little bit, gives you the most out of what you need. Uh, and it is a very, very nice option in the deck um, for you to kind of give a go. Uh, I personally like it, I think it works really, really nice. Another card you could play is Ancient Fairy Dragon, that then allows you to kind of nuke your or nuke your field spell zone um, and then move towards um, move towards a machine dupe play should you want to do it. Uh, another one which I think is really, really cool as well is Metaphys Horus. Um, because you can make that with one of your pendulum monsters, your level 5, uh, and then Horus can then steal one of your opponent's monsters, which is quite really cool. Uh, Omega, you know, best rank uh, level 8 in the game. Uh, Crystal Wing, because it's quite easily made in this deck, you do play a lot of tuners that can go on top of your synchros. Rose, to reset the board should you ever need to. Uh, Coral Dragon and Stardust Charge Warrior for the draws. You can play either or of these, you can swap these out should you wish to. Um, just play one or the other. Really, really down to you on where you want to go. Uh, and then the one Nat Beast. You can, of course, play Barkion in here as well. Um, should you want to be absolutely degenerate and go into like a Missius Radiant, which would be busted as hell. So um, you can go into a Missius Radiant, then go into a Nat Beast, and then go into a Barkion. And they're all Earth, so they're all going to get pluses off a of Missius Radiant. Uh, you're negating spells, you're negating traps, stops your opponent evenly matching you. You know, it's really, really cool. Uh, we've then got the one on the clock taker. Now, you don't really need to use this card in the sense that um, it's just there for the, a nice little attack reduction. Again, that can kind of help push you for the OTK. Um, but uh, because you've got like Mrs. Radiant and you've got other Link 2s you can go to, it's not an absolute staple in the deck. Uh, you've got the one Cleefort Genius. Um, now, again, this is really, really nice because it's unaffected by other spells and traps uh, and then un other activated Link monster effects. Uh, and then you can type one face up card on field and uh, one sorry one face up card on each player's field uh, except this card both those cards have their effects negated until the end of this turn when I'm, two monsters are special summoned to the zones this card points to which is quite easy because you play pendulums you add a level five or higher machine monsters so you can add five six seven or eight or even nine which is really really cool uh, and then we've got the one deco talker because you always need a link free kind of up your game uh, and then the one borrow dragon because i absolutely love this card you can play suruja in this deck but the issue with suruja is it's a little bit more inconsistent to get the four cards with different names on board. It actually takes you a lot to do. Um, obviously, with Scapegoat, you could then go into like um, Link Spider. You've got Scapegoat. Um, and then you've got your Mrs. Radiant. And then you'd have to find another way of getting another monster on board. So you might need to overextend to get into Suruja to use its full effect. But it is an option. You can still play it. I'm not saying you can't. Um, you know, the, like I said, the extra deck is quite loose. Uh, and it gives you the ability to kind of play whatever extra deck monsters you really want to. Other than that, that is it for the deck. Like I said, I absolutely love this deck. It's an incredibly fun deck to play. Um, always nice when your opponent's like, what the hell is that? And you go, oh, the Despots. Um, and even after playing them, you, you, you go one or two reactions. You either go, I love them, I want to build them. Or you go, I absolutely hate them and despise them. Go away. Um, so it's a very, very good deck. I really, really enjoy it and incredibly fun. So I hope this has given you a couple of ideas. I hope you enjoy it and I hope it kind of makes you want to build them or at least look into them. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share. Stick with us until Thursday because on Thursday we will have the Legendary Kyber Collection opening for you guys to check out, see what our ratios are like from the box uh, and if we see that elusive Ash Blossom and Joyous Springs. But thanks for watching. Uh, until next time, guys, or on Thursday, see ya.